What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the Ask Assist P podcast. So this is a complimentary podcast to the other side of the firewall, where we highlight those movers, shakers, and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. So with me today is Darren King Jr., so he's a returning guest to the podcast. So if you have not already, I will make sure I link it in. Uh, we had him on season two of 2023, so we're still in season two, technically. Uh, that, that'll change as we progress through the year. We'll get to season three. But uh, returning guest, so uh, Darren King Jr., he uh, reached out to me probably, oh, man, when, when did we talk? Was it was it summer or was it fall? I believe it was probably even the spring. Who knows? I don't know. Was recall. it spring? It wasn't too man. long ago. Right. We, we go through so many episodes. So, uh, you know, Air Force veteran uh, such as myself, uh, as well as the founder and a consultant at Priority Defense. So we talked about uh, what brought you into cyber, so your cybersecurity origin story. We talked about what you currently do with your uh, your company and how you got involved. Uh, so if we could just do a quick recap of who you are, where you're from, what the company does, and then we can go into what CMMC is before we pivot into all the new hotness, right? So you're my subject matter expert when it comes to CMMC 2.0. So without further ado, I give it to Darren. Yeah, Ryan, thanks for that introduction. Uh, it was great to be on here the last time that uh, we were uh, speaking. It was great to actually share the story uh, about my experience coming into cybersecurity uh, and then ultimately discussing even how did priority defense come about. Um, so yeah, as you've already said, I'm a Air Force veteran. Um, I, my career path has always been cybersecurity. Uh, and I really found a passion when it came to the security engineering and governance risk and compliance space. Um, and that's one of the things that's overlooked all the time. When people think of cybersecurity, they're always saying, I want to go into cybersecurity and they think they're hacking or they think that they're, uh, that the option is being a cybersecurity analyst or something of that nature. But there's so many other professions in it uh, and governance, risk and compliance, GRC, uh, it's one of those things that brings all of the facets of the career path, the IT, the cyber uh, together uh, and puts it under one umbrella to align with organizational strategy. So that's exactly what I like doing. Uh, it also allows you to be able to uh, satisfy those requirements uh, that are regulatory like CMMC, like we'll be discussing today. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, but yeah, CMMC is the DOD Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. Uh, that cybersecurity maturity model certification has evolved since it was initially presented. Uh, a lot of people uh, saw it come out a few years ago, actually. It was actually published in the Defense Federal uh, Acquisition Regulations Supplement, uh, DFARS. It was DFARS Clause 252-204-7. One nine and seven zero two one, I believe. That is amazing. That you committed. Uh, that. So, <laughs> I applaud you. So, I'm, I'm, I'm honest. <laughs> Being honest about it, I applaud you about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you live and breathe it, it becomes a lot easier. For there it sure. is. <laughs> so, yeah, that clause. When that clause came out, that was CMMC 1.0, uh, and the DOD kind of just stepped back from that and was like, "Well, let's." redo all of this. It didn't work out too well. And that's where we get CMMC 2.0. And that's what everyone has been clamoring over for the past uh, maybe two and a half years or so that everyone's been looking at this. Uh, and the DOD actually did a, a lot of us a favor and they published the documentation of what CMMC 2.0 would actually look like um, last year or the year before that. Yeah, it would have been the year before that even. Uh, that they published the documentation for CMMC levels one and level two. Um, there are three three different levels, CMMC level one uh, being to protect federal contracting information uh, based in FAR 52204-21. Um, and CMMC level two, which is focused on the protection, not only of federal contracting information, but controlled unclassified information 
and then you have CMMC level three that is focused on controlled unclass FCI, CUI, um, but it's also looking at advanced persistent threats, APTs, and how do you take that next level of cybersecurity uh, to protect all of the DOD's data that you will be processing, storing, and transmitting on your contractor information system. Uh, so all three of those, the, all three of those levels uh, are now out and available for everyone to see. Uh, and I think that's what we'll be discussing more of today is what did the DOD even say when they published their proposed rule for CMMC? Uh, so yeah, I think that'll be great for us to continue on from there. Yes, absolutely. So before we get there though, so you're able to um, uh, rattle off all of the uh, regulations uh, extremely well. Like you can tell it's definitely your bread and butter. This is, this is you live and breathe uh, regulatory compliance. So I, I, again, I applaud you. Like GRC, like you said, is, is highly overlooked. Uh, I tell people all the time, it's a very well-paying, sometimes boring, but very necessary part of cybersecurity. So I wish more people would look at it uh, for better or for worse, right? Like I, I don't mind people flooding into our, our side of cybersecurity as long as they have a passion for it, right? Like you have to you have to love uh, the, the, the rule of law, so to speak. So with that being said, um, if someone were to want to uh, pursue your path, right? You're a registered uh, practitioner of CMMC. How would they go about that? Like where, where would they start? And then how would they be able to progress? Progress. Yeah, if you wanted to be a registered practitioner of CMC, so there's uh, give a broad overview and, and then uh, focus it a bit there. So there are three different, well, really now they've created a fourth one, but um, really three different uh, functions or roles that are in the CMC ecosystem that the Cyber AB has defined. Now that gets a little bit different. Um, when you look at the CMMC rule, but that's another story. Um, but the lowest, the not the lowest level, but the level that is focused more so on implementing the requirements associated with CMMC. Uh, that level is the CMMC registered practitioner. Uh, they have two different ones, the CMMC registered practitioner and the CMMC registered practitioner advanced. Um, those are two different roles. And to do that, you really start off at the Cyber AB, which is the, the body that's responsible for the CMMC ecosystem. Um, you start off at the Cyber AB's website, cyberab.org, I believe. Uh, and you can begin the process of applying to uh, become a registered practitioner. And after you've applied to become a registered practitioner, it's a few courses um, and then you you're certified to be a registered practitioner after paying a fee and, and things like that. Um, but really getting the registered practitioner certification, I mean, that, that is a great thing to solidify that you have the knowledge requisite to perform this, right? But you want to have the knowledge beforehand about right. security engineering practices, maybe uh, about governance, risk and compliance overall. Um, so yeah, to come into the GRC space at times, uh, depending on what angle you take, registered practitioner, I believe, is more of a hands-on role uh, that we would have to make changes in the environment. And then you have these, the next individual, I say individual role, because you have an organizational, you have organizational roles in the CMC ecosystem as well. The next individual role is the CMC Certified Professional, CCP. Uh, and that role is the first step of being able to assess uh, and advise um, as a really like a management and auditor function for an organization. Uh, that CCP, a lot of people want to take the next step and become a CCA, which is a CMC Certified Assessor. Uh, and the CCA role are the individuals who can go out, assess organizations at CMMC level two without being managed or overseen by uh, another entity necessarily. The CCP is overseen by the CCA as they perform their duties. Uh, so yeah, those are the three different individual roles that we have uh, in the ecosystem.
No, that's a great breakdown because it uh uh not to bash cyber ab because they, they're a wonderful organization but uh, i was a little lost going through the website to figure out which level or which role was over the other one right uh i i know since then they've they've done a little bit of realization to the the website but i came in through a reddit link of some sort which sent me to the um shoots and ladders type board I don't know if you've seen it, uh, yes. and it thoroughly threw me off. I was like, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, I, which direction to go a, here. <laughs> they still have a similar workup, but it, whenever we get to the, well, I just say the proposed rule kind of shook that up even because the, the depiction you saw said, uh, more than likely said, in order to become a CCA, you start off as a CCP. And after you start off as a CCP, you go through this, this timeline of work. You have to complete a certain number of assessments uh, under advisement or being looked at by a CCA. And then you can become a CCA. So that's what they previously did do. And now the, the, the proposed rule has kind of shaken that up and said uh, CCPs can do assessments just like a CCA, as long as a CCA at a higher level, they can, I'm sorry, let me roll that back a little bit. The CCP can do a CMMC level two assessment without direct oversight by a CCA, but instead general oversight mm. and approval of their findings by a CCA. Uh, okay, so that that I did not know. So that, that's actually news to me. Um, so yeah, I, I'm glad that they are starting to um, more clearly define the roles and how to um, uh, obtain them or to to access the different levels, um, as well as uh, they, there's people like you who actually have gone through the process now because before it was a lot of no one's done it right, so we're kind of figuring out like how do we go about this, uh, but you don't have any uh, I should say mentors or uh, uh, people you can look up to to say, hey, how does this work? So now we actually have those people in the field, such as yourself. So uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge for the people who are listening. Like, go ahead and reach out to Darren <laughs> with your questions, uh, or just look at his his bio. Right, that, that can help you point you in the right direction as well. Um, kind of follow his his moves um, as he uh, kind of uh, sets the sets the path. Right, you're a trailblazer when it comes to the this new. Um, this new um, federal regulation um, that, you know, that's that's hitting us uh, kind of in the face. <laughs> There's a lot of people dragging their feet uh, and then that's not going to be possible in the very near future. So uh, it's, it's good that people are already out there in the field uh, getting the exposure. So with that being said, uh, what can you now bring to us uh, when it comes to uh, the, the new proposal and just the 2.0 actually being initiated right like uh like now having it's it's uh uh it's not kickstart so to speak but debut. it's, full it's full debut. debut there it is there it is yeah so yeah the cmmc rule so the way they go about things with the federal government is before they create a contract clause it goes through a rule making process and in order for cmmc to begin to show up in contracts um, they have to go through rulemaking and they start off with a proposed rule. Typically, um, they don't have to, they can go straight to a final rule, which means it's implemented in your contract whenever they want to starting at this point. Um, but they created a proposed rule, which means it allows industry, uh, and other entities to comment on that rule and help shape it a bit more. Is it going to be changed a whole lot? Probably not, but it allows others to right. take part in the, uh, decision-making process. So they, in December, December 23rd, I want to say right before Christmas, uh, LinkedIn was lit up like a Christmas tree because we all were excited. The DOD put the, uh, pr proposed rule out, um, for public inspection around then. They said it'll be fully released on the 26th. So it did come out fully on the 20th. Uh, 6th of December, but the 23rd, we got the, the pages were released and we can begin looking at it at that point. And it was um, very exciting to see that. Um, 
because we were wondering if it would be next year before we actually saw it. Uh, right. They wanted to take their time and the DOD CIO said it purposefully that he wanted to ensure that they got it right the first time and that they didn't continue to go back and recreate the wheel. So they took their time and now they have it out. Um, and it hasn't changed the requirements uh, for CMC level one and level two have not changed from uh, what we've seen published on the CMMC website this entire time for the most part. There were a few nuances, things that did change, but the, the requirements to implement NIST Special Publication 800-171 for CMMC Level 2 has not changed. And for CMMC Level 1, those controls out of NIST Special Publication 800-171 have not changed as well. Uh, so those things are positive for organizations because uh, most DOD contracts have always had a clause in them since at least 2016 when this DFARS clause 252-204- no, no, it's 252.204-7012 was published. Uh, and that clause said you must implement NIST Special Publication 800-171 if you're going to store, process, transmit, controlled unclassified information on contractor information systems. And CMMC now is saying, we've been telling you to do this this whole time. Uh, uh, advanced pers persistent threats have been eating our lunch. And now we're going to come and check your homework to make sure you actually did it. Uh, and that's where the beauty of the registered practitioner comes in a lot. <laughs> because it new is. organizations, <laughs> organizations that have been in the ecosystem in a while, they probably haven't implemented these requirements yet. Um, so now we're enabling them and supporting them in implementing all of those requirements. Uh, so the rule, the proposed rule came out uh, and it had a lot of large items in it. Um, and one of those items uh, that has just shook the ecosystem, but they were kind of anticipating this to happen was, uh, there's a, they call it an external service provider. An external service provider is uh, the most common example is a managed service provider, MSP. So if your MSP, which we'll call an external ser service provider, has access to configuration data or security information of the contractor information system, you'll also be required to implement the CMMC requirements. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if your company that you're supporting, your defense industrial-based company is required to implement CMMC level two, you have a requirement now to implement uh, CMMC level two as well and be certified against that, um, which means you have to pay for those CCPs and CCAs right. to come out and do an assessment on your uh, environment now. So that is something that for those organizations who typically don't get flow down of contract clauses from the DOD, right? well, now it's it's on there. That's very, very interesting actually, because yeah, it's gonna it's gonna open up a lot of um, these external service providers into new territory you've never been in before. So if you were a uh, assessor, in this field, I mean, that's just that's more work for you, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are a um, an MSP who's never been exposed to this before, it's homework, right? That's that's you having to now dig in pretty deep uh, to see how this now impacts you. Uh, with with that shift, right? So now the 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 burden is uh, being more spread out, which I would assume would be better for everyone, right? Like not everyone has a, a vested interest. They have a, a dog in the fight. Uh, has anyone been, I guess, relieved of burden? Has, it, has this shifted off of anyone's plate or is it more, has it just been spread out? Yeah, I don't think we saw much of anything relieved from anyone's plate at all. Um, somewhat actually, I'll, I'll say somewhat. It, it isn't gonna be very large. Um, one thing I can mention is that they have uh, 
I created a document. I have it on my LinkedIn account if anybody wanted to get it, but I created a document that kind of just broke down a few notes out of that. Uh, and one of it is that now they allow a self-assessment for CMMC level two. That's, that's an option um, if your contract allows for that. There's going to be a very small number of organizations that will actually be able to do that. But for those organizations, now they are only responsible for uh, implementing the this special publication 800-171 requirements um, and maintaining those requirements and your system security plan, uh, uploading an SPRS score, which is um, system, ooh, I don't know that acronym off the top of my head right no, now. No worries, no worries. Um, <laughs> but you have to, you have to cr pretty much score yourself based on the DOD assessment methodology. And you upload that score into a DOD system, SPRS, PIEE. -E. Um, and once you upload that score, you have to also have a senior member of the organization attest to that or affirm that you will maintain those requirements. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all you do with that one. There's an annual requirement for that affirmation from that senior individual, but that's pretty much all that they would have to do. They don't have to pay for the C3PAO to come out at that point to do that assessment on them. So that can save them several tens of thousands, depending on the okay. complexity of their network. Got it. No, that's, that's very, uh, very interesting. So to, to aid, to uh, distinguish yourself, to make sure that that is who you are, right? So that way you can be protected. But then uh, also uh, you still have to have someone who, understands the uh the verbiage the rules the guidance so they're still going to need the requisite training um there's like so much research you can do so that's not to spook people but uh in my mind it's it's better safe than sorry <laughs> you know like i would want someone on my team who understands uh the the new regulation so and i don't have so I put it out there i have no sponsorship no marketing deals no none of that right this is me just thinking <laughs> in this conversation <laughs> if i were one of those companies <laughs> I, I would i would definitely want to uh uh cover my my butt so to speak mm -hmm. um so no, so that's interesting. So it's good to see that there there it seems to be thoughtful. It seems to be that's not just we're gonna uh, uh, punch everybody in the face with the new regulation and see what shakes out. It seems to be that they were actually thinking like, how does this how is this going to better protect our systems? How is it going to better protect our um, uh, contractor information? How is this going to better uh, um, secure the, the Department of Defense and all of the uh, the dip right? How are right. we going to protect the the nation? So it's good to see national security being at the forefront of this. Is is how I um, see it roll up. So so that, that no, that's, that's great information. Um, so yeah. I, I I know you've you've created a product uh, that that's on your LinkedIn. Uh, you're also a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, I don't always know what to ask you because you know so much about <laughs> this topic. So uh, I would like so. What has no one asked you <laughs> that you're like, this, this, this is something that's either uh, obscure and someone needs to notice it or something that is blaringly obvious and no one's asked me the question because they just simply don't know to ask me the question. You know, I think one of the key things that organizations have to think about as they're going through this journey or they're planning to go through this journey uh, is scoping their environment the right way. Um, scoping is one of the steps that, or one of the requirements associated with creating your CMMC package is what I'll call it, um, about determining how to go about CMMC. And they allow you several different categories to scope your, or to categorize your technology and your people and your external services or services into. And if you scope it appropriately, you limit the amount of work you actually have to do. Um, so there, there's a thing called a CY asset category um, and their security protection asset category. And those two will be required to satisfy all of the, the requirements in this special publication 800-171. Uh, then you have something called a contractor risk managed asset. And a contractor risk managed asset, you don't have to apply all of those requirements to it. 
So if you have people in your organization who don't touch CUI, who have no access to CUI at all, do you have to apply all of the same security requirements to them or to those spaces? No, you may not have to. Now, doing something like that requires you to put in administrative policies, probably some technical controls, and to maintain imp the implementation of those. Um, and so for some organizations, if they're not very mature in their processes or they're not going to mature with someone who is aware of what to do, uh, I probably wouldn't recommend for them to try to use that very much because they can easily slip and begin giving access to CUI to people who are in that category. And now when your assessor comes, those people are in scope and you've just missed all of the other requirements being implemented. Um, but con the scoping of your environment overall makes such a difference in how much work you'll have to do, uh, how much it'll overall cost you, and how easy you easy or not you make it for that assessor. And if you make it easier for that assessor, you can probably get away with it for less because they have to do less work. No, that, that's that's key. I think like no, that, that's a, a great point, especially. Uh, the overlap between that and and many other um, uh, frameworks. So I, I guess the same could be said with PCI DSS and 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 the like, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about scope. If you if you can if you can nail that, it does save you a lot of time and energy. Because um, I'm not by by any means uh, CMMC um, uh, guru such as yourself, but I, I have been in in uh, NIST CSFs and PCI DSS and things of that nature where uh, scope can cost you. Uh, a reassessment scope can cost you uh, another penetration round by the the team right more vulnerability assessment th things of that nature uh because it's like oh we missed it so <laughs> we don't right. we don't go back for free <laughs> right. these are right. paid services so no yeah so scope scope is uh uh paramount when, especially when it comes to um uh both time and money so no that's great I, i'm glad that you shared that with us um there's just so much to unpack here. Um, I definitely have to there's have you other, on, There's on, another on the thing that they have out yes. there um, that just hit the wire shortly after this was published, but it's in a, it, it has a direct relationship to this. Um, it's cloud service providers. Everyone's using cloud service providers at this point. Um, I have no idea who, well, I have an idea. We have some people we've worked with, but... Um, there are very few organizations that have no cloud service providers at all. It's, it's actually challenging to find uh, software that isn't in the cloud at this right. point at times. Like even if you wanted, you know, your favorite PDF viewer, if we don't mention the name, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> if you have that application, it's challenging now. You have to actually search for it for the desktop application that does not include their document cloud or something. Um, uh, so it's cloud service providers now, at, well, what the pr proposed rule said was your cloud service provider must be FedRAMP moderate. And if they are not FedRAMP moderate, they can be FedRAMP moderate equivalent. And FedRAMP, if anyone doesn't know, is the federal government's um, pretty much their cloud application um, approval or authorization process is a, is a, is a way to describe it there. Um, so if you're, if you're using cloud service providers, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and it stores processes or transmits CUI, then it must be FedRAM moderate or FedRAM moderate equivalent. And the idea initially was FedRAM moderate equivalent was you had to provide a system security plan um, and some other documentation ensuring that the cloud service was actually satisfying the FedRAMP requirements. But now the DOD has come out with a memo recently, shortly after that, that said, you can get that system security plan all you would like to, but that organization has to now not only implement every single requirement of FedRAMP moderate, 
but not just implement every single one of them. They have to actually ace every single one of them. There are no plans of action and milestones, no deficiencies that they can have. Hmm. And um, they have to be assessed by a three PAO, which is a third party off third party assessor organization. Um, so now they also have to be assessed by the third party assessor organization. Um, and the only thing they don't have to do really is just get sponsored and put on the Fed ramp mar marketplace. So they pretty much have to satisfy everything except right. going through the process to be put on Fed ramp. So that's going to increase, you know, the cost of those software, that software, um, that organizations or that cloud infrastructure that organizations are going to want to utilize. Um, and th that's something that, you know, not a lot of people are preparing for at the moment but they, they should be prepared for it. Uh, if they can maybe move away from those services or you know, restructure your budgets and your strategies to align appropriately with these, the changing environment. Right, yeah, I was, I was not tracking that. So, because um, I remember seeing uh, Verbids not too long ago where uh, Microsoft had made some milestones, had, had made some progress. Uh, I'm not sure about, um, uh, AWS, but I, I see that there, it was coming from both ends. Basically, it was the uh, the industrial base trying to get their their ducks in a row, but as well as the major cloud service providers knowing that this was coming down the pipe, wanting to uh, to also get their ducks in a row. But like you said, that, that doesn't come cheap. So that that price just gets passed down to the uh, whomever the consumer is. Yeah. Yeah. To, uh, to, to make that happen, especially if you have to ace the test, right? Because uh, the poems, uh, like, so I've been part of the, the DOD for 20 years. Po poems are written a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things you're just like, you just can't upgrade that right now. Like, <laughs> or oh, we just can't yes. change that, or we just can't, <laughs> can't do that. So to, to say that you cannot have uh, a poem or that you can't have a lengthy poem anyway, um, is speaking volumes because uh, yeah I've I've come out of assessments as a, a QA assessor or as a uh, wing IG where the the poem is uh, reams of paper. <laughs> so, oh yes. Here's here's all the things we're going to fix before you come back. <laughs> yep. I, I, I mean I was an assessor when I was at Air Force Special Operations Command. I was an IG person there, so I understand that was a uh, some pretty lengthy. Uh, poems I've seen at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the thing that they hand to your commander, he's just like, he or she is just like, uh, well, I guess what you're doing for us. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not in the budget right. right now, so I don't think we're going right. to make Right. right. Uh, so now so these no, organizations so... have to have that and, you know, a common one that organizations use, so you were mentioning Microsoft and all those other ones, you know, because a lot of people are used to those desktop applications. Um, you can see the uh, increased cost when it comes to their cloud infrastructure for Microsoft 365. Um, so yeah, it, it's an increased cost, but you're getting, you're getting a higher level of validated, um, assured security initially. Still puts some onus on you because it is software as a service. So we know that, you know, look at that chart. There is still some responsibility on the consumer. To right. There's always that, data. that shared, yeah, shared, shared yeah, responsibility. Shared responsibility. So, um, but uh, you do get that assurance that, oh, the government has said that things that they have put in place is sufficient at the moment for what they are doing. No, absolutely. So, no, that, that's great. And, and it also, it, it seems to be, uh, over several of the past administrations, the, the government's definitely putting their their uh, their their money where it counts. So it's not ever enough, <laughs> but it's it's it seems to be being put in place uh, around better protecting our uh, not only our national interests but just IP in general. Like uh, so, we don't have uh, the um, our near peers, our adversaries, uh, just able to, like you said, the, the assistant, um, uh, oh man, I just lost the acronym on top of my head. Advanced Persistent Threats. Uh, yeah, APTs. Right, APTs, uh, uh, as as much as it has been, right? Like the past, I'd say, uh, 
four or five years has been pretty rough when it comes to uh, the protection of our systems, right? That you have the 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 um, the sunburst, right? Uh, you have the solar winds uh, issue. You have colonial pipelines. You have JBS. You have, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, with the uh, the MGM that just took place, Caesars that took place, like right. Uh, so th this is definitely necessary. It is going to be um, a little bit expensive, both in time and money. However, uh, with the increase in regulation, the actual oversight will come more security. And I'm not just, that's a, not just lip service because I'm in, in the industry, right? Uh, I have actually seen it where I, I've seen organizations that have really no <laughs> protection of PII and things of that nature who had to buckle down and put in the, the right requirements after not doing well when it came to an assessment. Um, and if they want to keep the lights on, that they have to protect people's um, interest and in their their uh, their personal identifiable information. Um, and the, the right. same thing goes with the the DIB and its, uh, its intellectual properties and, and that of uh, the federal contract information. So it, it just it's it's a it's a necessity. It's not just something that that we want to happen to generate funds and money. It's something that actually needs to uh, be in place. So now this is all great information, and I, I can't wait to right. see like now that. 2.0 has debuted. I can't wait to see implementation and then see how the actual um, dib works it, right? Because it's going to be rough for some uh, companies. Like you, you have your bigger organizations, which uh, they, they don't pay for sponsorship either. So I'm not going to name drop them, but <laughs> they make planes, they engineer buildings, things of that nature, right. <laughs> um, which would like they're, they're going to double down, but you have your smaller contractors who have not had this type of exposure they're the ones who are going to have to like really crank it out really seek that protection really get their people trained really dig into this uh because they don't have infinite pockets right like they like you said they have to make sure they scope appropriately uh to make sure they they meet requirements and then also not burn funds so it's going to be very interesting year coming up like 2024 right. 2025 it's going to be very interesting so and, it's, and i think Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, and, and uh, I was going to say, pe people such as yourself are going to be very instrumental uh, in making that progress. But no, please go ahead. Yeah, we're we're priority defense really focuses on smaller businesses, right? Um, we, I mean, one of our organizations is small as sixteen people, right? So we we work with small organizations all the way up to a uh, hundred or so. I think that after a hundred, you're actually not considered a small business at times, depending on dollar amounts and all of that. Small business administration can tell you best. Please don't <laughs> let me right. be the one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those smaller organizations, um, I think they'll definitely feel like it'll be uh, a constraint on their wallets. But one thing that they should know is that the government is not, they don't want it, but they expect that contractors are going to charge a higher premium on their contract service because they have, the contractor now has to meet these requirements. So um, the organization isn't burdened to um, just... If, if I told the government 10 years ago, it's going to cost them $5 for me to fix something, then I have to maintain $5. And now I'm spending $3 to maintain CMMC. No, that's, that's not expected. Um, inflation, uh, new regulations, the increased cost of operations in general is going to require that you charge for your services appropriately, whatever that may be. Um, it could stay the same. It could go up, but the organization doesn't have to feel like they have to just take on the burden um, all alone. Um, now, for those organizations that are subcontractors, right, they're the ones that have to now um, work with their prime contractor um, as they are negotiating their rates. Um, they might see a little more ch of a challenge in those firm fixed price contracts, but um they still have to negotiate those rates, however they would feel appropriately between the two parties. Um, so yeah, and between uh, that, that brought another thought to me. Maybe I'm squirreling too much there. No, no um, it's perfect. <laughs> but um, yeah, so as we talk about the CMMC requirements that organizations will have to satisfy, um, the CMMC requirement that organizations are going to expect 
are levied upon the contracted the contract when it's awarded. So if a major defense contractor is awarded, is awarded a contract, the CMMC level requirement in there could be level three. However, it's up to that defense contractor, prime contractor to now as they, um, as they subcontract work to identify what CMMC level the subcontractor is to satisfy. So that that's a difference that you know you don't have to look in the contract to know what it is. You speak with your prime contractor and they'll help you. They'll they'll tell you what they're expecting. Um, now, if and the rule, the proposed rule, it actually spelled out a few things there. It says uh, in one of them, I, I put a reference in there as well, of exactly where I got some of these statements from. Um, so if your prime contractor uh, has a CMMC level two certification assessment or a CMMC level three service certification assessment require, requirement, and you, the subcontractor, store, process, or transmit CUI and performance of the subcontract, your minimum requirement is going to be a CMMC level two certification assessment. That's, that's in the present language uh, what it's expressing. So you can ask your prime what their certification requirement is going to be, or the requirement is going to be levied upon you based upon whatever your prime was, um, what, what was in that solicitation originally. Um, so yeah, that those are those are things that we I found as I was reviewing that rule overall. Um, it's it has a lot more. <laughs> it has a whole right. lot more. Um, but I think those are are some pretty big nuggets so far. No, no that's great. And and uh, again, uh, just scratching the surface, right? Um, but it's a, a lot deeper, or I should say they. The under, my understanding of it is a lot deeper uh, every time I have a conversation with you about this. Because um, I, I I do, like, uh, behind the curtain, I, I do want to pursue um, some education uh, within it. I'm not exactly sure what path I'm going to take. Um, however, um, it's good to see people already blazing that trail. So, like, when I was initially looking at it, I was like, you know, it's not enough people out there with it. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to pursue it. So I'm, I'm sure there's other audience members such as myself are in the same boat, just like, I'm very interested in jumping in this, but I don't want to jump to the, the, the deep end just yet, right? I kind of want to, I kind of want to uh, glean some more wisdom, kind of understand where things are going to shake out before I start pursuing and hitting those books, uh, because this is a new year, so it's time for me to hit the books on something, <laughs> <laughs> and it most likely will, will uh, be a combination of this and, and digging into a little bit more cloud stuff, but with that being said, um, what like, so aside from you running, like running your business, consulting, digging deeper into CMMC and all that good stuff, what are you doing online? Like, we, we always have to go there uh, at the end, at, at oh. the end of the show. Like, what, what do you do? Because a lot of people just get caught up in the, the study grind, right? So that's right. why I'm so hesitant to get back into it. Because <laughs> I know, I know this time next year I'll be so deep into it, right? What are you doing to to help you mellow out, uh, to to balance your uh, your life? Right. I don't know if I had this set up when I spoke with you last time, but um, I schedule out. I try to stay very rigorous with my schedule, um, but I will work as much as I need to six days a week. Typically, I do that Monday through Saturday, and Sunday is my day where is my family and myself. I put away the laptop, I put away the phone, I, everything's put away, and it's just us. Um, so that's really what I try to do to maintain a certain level of um, a certain level of balance in my life. Uh, but also, my wife and I, I actually have to do more research tonight because that's my job is researching our next vacation. There it <laughs> so, is. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that uh, I have to make sure that I, yeah, do the more reviews on the resorts we're looking at. Okay. Um, all inclusive vacations. So that is the best idea I've ever heard of. And if no one has ever tried it, please do once in your life and you will never go back probably. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We have, we, 
we're now like I just I just retired from the military, right? So I haven't had a year yet, but we we did it when I initially got out, and now we have we've already planned to do it again uh, later on this year. Um, yeah, if you can make it happen, uh, it's it's nice to be able to go on vacation and not have to worry about like okay, how do I pay for this service or pay for that service or how do I like how much percentage do I give the housekeeper versus the bartender versus whatever I'm interested in it's like no I already paid up front Right, <laughs> right. everything is taken care of just go and just meander around Wake up in the morning, I'm going to grab some breakfast. Lunchtime, <laughs> I'm going to grab lunch. Oh, I want a snack. They have a swim up bar. Uh, I'm going there to it grab is a snack or something. So, uh, yeah, that's why. Uh, yeah, so vacation with her and my daughter. And uh, yeah, just generally just time to take away uh, from work at, at night and rest. Um, Okay. so I think that, you know, uh, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of, uh, of sports or anything of that nature. Uh, some people find that offensive probably, <laughs> but I am not, I, I mean, I challenge my dad because he loves, um, uh, a team in Philadelphia that should not be named. Um, and <laughs> And uh, that's that's my one joy with football because I watch those games specifically, hoping that they'll lose. Oh, I'm man. sorry, fan. <laughs> Just so I can call him afterwards and say, "So, <laughs> what happened to your team? <laughs> They're not looking good out there." That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, in general. trying to take time to spend time with family because, you know, trying to run a business is challenging, right? It, it demands a lot of your time. Uh, it demands a lot of your energy. Uh, and it takes that balance uh, and that focus to be able to make sure you can go for the long haul rather than, you know, the next five years. No, absolutely. So no, that, that's that's great information, especially for those who are, are looking to start their own business or just go into business for themselves, right? Like the, you don't have to have um, a thousand employees. Sometimes you could just work for you, um, but you have to have that balance, right? Like when you're your own boss, you're the hardest boss ever because <laughs> you're the boss of yourself. So Yes. uh, yeah, no, it's good to, good to see that you take that time. It's good good to pass that on to the uh, to the audience as well. Um, I, I, again, I got to have you back on so we could talk about this again as, as things progress, because uh, again, we're just scratching the surface, but no, it's, uh, very informative. I definitely appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, you do have the, uh, the time to have that vacation, but, uh, also, Uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink for the audience. If you have questions <laughs> or if you need services, definitely hit up all the links that uh, Darren's going to share with us. Uh, definitely hit us up at all the websites that go by our name. You can meet me up personally. I'm at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. And you, Darren, where can people find you? Yeah, you're primarily going to find us on LinkedIn, um, or you can check out our website at PrioryDefense.net. Um, and those are the two sources we're primarily focusing on right now. Absolutely. And then all those links will also be in the description as well. Definitely continue to tune in. Stay safe. Stay secure.